Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Cambridge um, International A Level Pure Mathematics P1 specimen paper. Um, and this question here is about functions, and they've told us that functions f and g are defined by f of x is 3x plus 2 and g of x is 4x minus 12. In both cases, x is an element of the real numbers. So there's no restriction in the domain whatsoever. Any number can be put into these two functions. All right, so now, um, as I just read out, this is basically the same as saying f of x equals 3x plus 2. So just another way of writing this down. And this is the same as saying g of x is equal to 4x minus 12. There's no difference between these uh, whatsoever. They are actually the same thing. All right, so you don't need to worry too much about, oh, I haven't seen it like this before. They're the same thing. So it says solve the equation. Now this says the inverse of f of x, f, when you have this superscript power of minus 1, x equals g f x. Now this means the inverse, the inverse of the function f. Not to be confused with the derivative of x. This means the derivative. This is like when you differentiate it. And this means the inverse. Now, many students, they do confuse the two. The inverse has a power of minus 1, and the derivative has like this dash. They're not the same. Okay, so be careful about that. So we got to equate the in we got to solve the equation that is formed when we equate the inverse of the function f with the composite function g of f of x. Okay, so basically, what does that mean? So first of all, let's find out what inverse of f of x is. Now, the inverse of a function is what undoes that function. Okay, and to find the inverse of a function, we basically follow the following steps. First of all, I'm going to rename the function y. So I'll write, instead of f of x, I'll write y equals 3x plus 2. And then what I do is I replace the y with x and the x with y. I switch them around. So I haven't rearranged it. I've just, wherever I saw x, I change it with y. Wherever I saw a y, I change it with an x. And then I make y the subject. The process of making y the subject will basically undo this function. It will cause it to be the inverse. So now if I make y the subject, I've got to subtract 2 from both sides. And then I've got to divide by 3. So I have x minus 2 over 3 equals y. So therefore, the inverse function is equal to x minus 2 over 3. So that's the first part. We found the inverse function. Okay. And we can see that this is the inverse function because it undoes the function. So for example, if I put x equals 5 into here, I'm going to get 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2, which is 17. Okay. So x equals 5, the inverse function gives us 17. Now, if I put 17 inside the inverse function, what does it give me? If I put 17 in here, I have 17 minus 2, gives me 15 divided by 3, gives me 5. All right, it undoes the function. It takes you back to the original value. Okay, so that's what the inverse function does. Okay, so that's, um, it kind of undoes the function. That's what the inverse function is. And this is how you find the inverse function in the way I showed you. You could also, do, you could also use what's called a flowchart to do it as well. So I'll show you that quickly just so you understand. So if you start with x and you think what you do to end up with, 3x plus 2, well, first you have to multiply by 3. That's how you get 3, 3x. And then you have to add 2, and you end up with 3x plus 2. That's the original function. Okay, now if we go, if we start from the opposite side, and we do the opposite thing, so we start from x, okay, just like I started from x here, but I'm going in the opposite direction, and I carry out the opposite operations, if I think about what's the inverse of adding, it's subtracting. So plus 2, the inverse of that is subtracting 2. So end up here with x minus 2. And then I also have to do the inverse of multiplying by 3, which is like dividing by 3. So I end up with x minus 2 over 3. That's the inverse function. So this is the inverse function. And this is the original function. Okay. So if you, if you do the opposite actions in the opposite direction, the inverse, um, you know, the inverse operations in the opposite direction, Okay, starting from x in the, in the end here, you end up with the inverse function that we found. Okay, now, that's part, uh, that's just finding the inverse function. Now we've got to find what g of f of x is. Now, g of f of x, this is called the composite function. This is where we have to take f of x and substitute it inside the function g. 
So it's like you replace the G with f of x. Okay, uh, we all know how to, for example, if I said find G2, we know we have to replace the x here with 2. So you have 4 times 2 minus 12. But here we've got to replace the x in this function with what f of x is. So this basically goes in there. All right, so G of f of x is basically replacing the the x in the function g with what f of the function f is and the function f is 3x plus 2 and this is going to give you instead of x i'm going to write 3x plus 2 it's 4 times x so it's 4 times 3x plus 2 and then minus 12. this is going to give me 4 times 3x is 12x 4 times 2 is 8 so it's plus 8 minus 12 which gives us 12x minus 4. So we can see that g of f of x, g of f of x is equal to 12x minus 4. Now we have to solve the equation they ask us to solve, where we equate the inverse function with g f of x. So we're going to have inverse of f of x is equal to g of f of x. So that gives us um, x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 12x minus 4. That's the equation we have to solve. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of the fraction. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by 3. So I have x minus 2 equals 3 times 12x minus 4. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this bracket. So I have x minus 2 equals 36x minus 12 and now I can bring the x's together and the y and the um, you know the non-x's together so I have minus 2 plus 12 equals 36x minus x so I'm going to have 10 equals 35x therefore 10 over 35 is equal to x well that simplifies 5 goes into both of these, so 10 divided by 5 is 2 over 35 divided by 5 is 7. x equals 2 over 7, and um, that is the solution to this equation. Okay, that's the solution to this equation, where the inverse of f of x will be the same as g of f of x when x equals 2 7, when these two are equal. So there we have answered question number 2. It's, uh, you know, a kind of a basic, uh, almost IGCSE, style question in terms of you know this is what we learned in IGCSE maths right so it's not too difficult um yeah so that concludes this question other questions from this particular um specimen paper for the international a level for uh, Cambridge uh, can be found in the playlist that will appear over here other questions from the topic of functions um in uh, you know this Cambridge syllabus um, you will find in the playlist over here I will yeah I'll save this under functions and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can look at this video here which will show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for um, in case you're looking for other papers other syllabuses IGCSE I'll give you a link here which will tell you how to use the channel to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon